So hi guys, today we're going to explain the uniqueness theorem and we are going to uh, state why is it important um, and uh, the, the proof of the uniqueness theorem also. So let's just start. Why is the uniqueness theorem important? Uh, okay, it, it makes us solve the Laplace equation, which is the Laplacian of V equals zero. It gives us some insights uh, into the solution of the Laplace equation. And it's also uh, is, a, is a solid proof of the image theory. Image theory, which is very, is very important in some electrostatic problems. Okay, let's just have a, a simple review um, of the Laplace equation uh, solutions. Um, let's just assume the most simple case, that is uh, V is only uh, dependent on one variable, which is X. Uh, so we're trying to solve uh, Laplacian of V equals zero uh, for just one uh, one variable. And uh, the solution of this equation is V of X is equal to MX plus P, which we can easily grab in uh, like this. And we now just can, you know, um, notice two, uh, one, uh, one very important thing. The first thing is the minima and the maxima appear at the boundaries. Here is uh, the maximum value of, uh, of V and here is the minimum value of v and they both appear at the boundaries this might be uh, this might be a very uh, silly statement but it's a uh, it's a very very uh, uh, important statement to uh, prove the uniqueness theorem okay so what is the uniqueness theorem okay in some volume like you know just um let's just to choose the right pen and yep that's it okay in some volume like this and in this volume we have no uh, no charges rho equals zero if we have some volume that has some specific boundary conditions and can st satisfy laplace equation which means that the laplacian of v equals zero only one solution exists okay this might see this might seem like you know pretty trivial like of course one only uh, so one solution only exists but if we if we can think about it mathematically uh, this is a partial differential equation a second order partial differential equation and uh, and uh, this type of equations uh, just doesn't have you know like uh, only one solution it uh, in mathematics it only it uh, it mainly has many many solutions but uniqueness theorem helps helps us to just say there is only one solution to this problem if if uh, if you know two things if it satisfies the plus equation and it has some specific boundary conditions and if you can get a solution from this, then this is the only solution. You can't have two uh, solutions or more. So let's just try to uh, give a decent proof for this uh, this theorem. Um, let's try by assuming that we are wrong. Assume there are two solutions to this uniqueness theorem. Okay. Assume that we are we are given some boundary conditions. We have some boundary conditions for our problem, and that uh, this um, this problem satisfies Laplace equation. That means that the Laplacian of V is equal to zero. Um, assume we're wrong, and there are two solutions for this physical problem. Assume there are V1 and V2. Okay. Let's assume V1 and V2 are both uh, solutions to this problem, and that means that. Uh, the Laplacian of both of them is equal to zero. And uh, there is also one important uh, notice that they both have the same boundary conditions. So their values at the boundary of this problem here are equal. So V1 equals V2 at the boundary. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's just consider V3 which is equal to V1 minus V2. Let's get the Laplacian of V3 is going to equal to Laplacian V1 minus Laplacian of V2. And we know that Laplacian of V1 is zero and the Laplacian of V2 is also zero. So that means the Laplacian of V3 is zero. So if you notice something here, V3 satisfies Laplace equation. And as we stated earlier uh, um, here, where is it? Yeah, here. We stated earlier that if uh, if some if some uh, some function satisfies Laplace equation, that means the minimum, the minima, and the maxima appear at the boundaries. Here is the maxima, and here is the minima, and they both appeared at the boundaries. So this will will also work in our case, and that means that 
all the maxima and minima will appear at the boundary. Okay, so we have the maxima and minima that appear at the boundary, and we know that V3 is equal to zero at the boundary. Why is that? Because V3 is equal to V1 minus V2, and we know that V1 equals V2 at the boundary. That means that V3 is equal to the boundary. So we have this, we have this in mind. Now we have zero, okay, and we know that. We know that the maximum and the minima appear at the boundary, and this is the boundary. So the maximum value is zero, and the minimum value is zero. So we can't have any other values. We can't like you know just say that v3 is equal to uh, two at some point. No, we can't because two is the maximum. Two is bigger than zero. So this is not valid. That means that v3 is always always equal to zero, and that means there uh, that v1 is equal to v2 because v3 is v1 minus v2 so that means there's only one solution to this physical problem only one solution can exist to this physical problem okay. thank you for your time i wish i have succeeded to give you some insights into the uniqueness theorem and see you next time